Hello everyone, welcome to a lesson where I will focus mainly on uh, data analysis and how we, how we can use uh, Excel and uh, graphical analysis in our experiment. I chose a, typo, a typical experiment of um, mass moving in uniform circular mo motion. This is the little mass M we see here. And we hang a uh, known mass and this the weight of this mass will provide the centrifugal force of the mass m. In this experiment, we don't know the value of this little m, so we're going to use the experiment to find that out. And uh, by writing the equations, well, centrifugal force is mass times centrifugal acceleration, we can easily derive this relationship between both masses, speed, and the radius of the path, which we'll, we'll use to sketch our graphs in the end. Uh, this is a typical experiment, similar to many, to many experiments we do in the classroom. Either, it doesn't matter the topic, we always find the relationship between two quantities, and then we will work on those quantities by collecting that. On this first part of the experiment, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel, and then on the second part, which will be a separate video, I will show you some uh, features of graphical analysis. So what can we do here? First, we need a, what we call a raw data table. Raw data is the data that we measure directly in the experiment with a stopwatch, with a ruler, whatever you use. And here, uh, well, uh, I'm cheating a little bit because we didn't measure speed uh, directly on the experiment. So let's assume we have some sensor and the sensor could measure the speed. And I'm going to take this for simplicity as raw data. So let's assume we measure the radius with a ruler and we measure the speed with some sensor and that this is our raw data. The first thing we need to be careful with with our absolute uncertainties uh, because our decimal places of the measured values must match the decimal places of the absolute uncertainty. So for the radius we have uh, two decimal places which means we will have two decimal places on each value. The same for the speed, our uncertainty is 0 0.3 meter per second, which means one decimal place for each measurement. This is what we have here. Uh, it doesn't matter if you register or if you re uh, re record these values on Excel or in Word. Just a little trick, I'm sure most of you know this. We just we can just copy paste from Excel to Word, for example, here, or vice versa. Imagine if you record this table uh, in Word, you just copy paste and you go to an empty Excel sheet and you just paste it. So don't need to type it two or three times, just copy paste from one place to the other. Everything is very easy to do. And now let's focus on our Excel. Okay, what do we do with the raw data? We have to treat it, we have to process it, we have to analyze it. And um, the values we, cal we calculate in the processed data table depend on what we want for the experiment. If you remember, we need square of the speed and the radius to sketch a graph. So we need to calculate the square of the speed and that's what we're going to do. So how to do this in the most um, easy and fast way? Please don't use a piece of paper and a calculator because you'll be uh, doing endless calculations. So the easiest way, type your formulas in Excel. We know the formulas for average. So we just add all the numbers and divide by, by the number of, of trials. And in Excel, we just type it. Um, you can use a function average, or if you don't want to do it, or if you don't know how to do it, you just add the number 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and divide. So I'm going to choose the average of these five measurements. And now we just drag it. <laughs> and Excel calculates everything automatically. And this is even 
the excellent because if later you found out you measured something wrong, let's say you measured this three, it was not three, but it was five, you can just replace it here and Excel changes immediately. And now, how do we calculate the absolute uncertainty in the average speed? Here in the rod table, we have the same uncertainty for all measurements because this is the uncertainty that we estimate for the experiment is related with how we measure it. But here we perform some calculations and one way to estimate the absolute uncertainty in the average is through this formula here. So we just find the maximum value on the five trials, the minimum, we calculate the difference and divide by two. Again, we can do this in Excel very easy. You can say, okay, what is the maximum value? Just type max in this five trial minus the minimum value in this same five trial. So you don't have to go and look uh, manually and look with your eyes, which is one is the lar largest, which one is the smallest. Excel will do that for you. And then now, we just close brackets and divide by two. And here we are. Okay, um, oh, I, so I forgot to tell you something. I don't know how you format your Excel, but it really doesn't matter. Let's say when you do these calculations, you have a lot of decimal places. So probably you'll see something like this. And here we can do the same. Okay, we can do the same now. What do we do when you calculate from Excel? Absolute uncertainties can only have one significant figure. So the first thing we will do here, if you notice this is zero point something, so one significant figure in all these values means one decimal place. So we will come here, format cell, number, and we will choose one decimal place. And now our measurements of the average speed, the decimal places in average speed must match, must be equal to the number of decimal places on the absolute uncertainty. So let's do the same thing. Format cells, number, and we need one. Decimal place. And everything now <laughs> is looking beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, next column is the square of the speed. Well, I don't think you need instructions on how to calculate this, the square of a number. So we just gotta go here. This is the square of the average speed, the square of this number. We just type that in Excel. And again, it goes automatically. And finally, we need again to calculate the absolute uncertainty, but now on the square of the speed. This is probably the most boring part on data analysis to calculate all these uncertainties. So how to do this? You can uh, revise our topic one, calculation of uncertainties, and uh, you will find this formula. So our square speed, I just called it X. This is more or less what we call in the, when we learn the topic. So when we do some multiplication, this is what it is, square is a multiplication we can work it out by the absolute uncertainty, by the, by the value, which is what we call the fractional uncertainty, and we just apply the formula. So our absolute uncertainty on P square, this formula, which came from here, delta x is delta V square, x, x is V square, so delta V square, which you call delta X, is just 2 V squared, delta V divided by V. Let's type that here. So we have equal to 2 multiplied by V square. V square is this column, this value here. Multiplied by, and now we have delta V divided by V. Delta V is this cell, K, C, divided by this, delta V divided by V. Take your time to understand this if it sounds confusing. And now we just 
drag it uh, through all the values. And now again, let's. This is absolute uncertainty. We need only one significant figure. Everything is fine for these values, but these ones here, 1.4, 1.3, 1.4, we have two significant figures. So we need to fix this. The one way to fix it, well, the way to fix it is again the same trick. So we have, we cannot have any decimal places here. Otherwise, we will, we will have two significant figures, and we'll do it like this. But now these values have a problem because the number of decimal places of these values must be equal to the number of decimal places of the absolute uncertainty. Let's do it. Decimal places must be the same number. No decimal place. And that's it. So we finished the calculation of our um, processed data. These are the values we're going to use in the, um, in, in the graph, which I will show you on the next video. And um, let me see if I didn't forget anything. Okay. So remember, please do this in your Excel. Keep this file with you. Don't erase it because you may be you may need this file later. As I said, for example, if you realize that this value is wrong, it was not 3.8, but it was 12. It doesn't matter. All these values will change automatically. You see? Let's do control Z. So all this change if you if you do it like this. So it's a very easy, very useful way to do it. And uh, that's it. So thank you for watching and see you soon for our second video on graphical analysis.